Hi, this is Jan Chris from Gorefest und ihr hört What's Metal, the show that kicks ass. That's right. So we are standing here on the Wacken Festival together with two members of Gorefest who just uh, reunited. Um, when was this um, process made, finally? Uh, Baudouin called me up one night after that we didn't speak to each other for like six years and we talked things through and about a couple of months later the four of us ended up in my house and we were sitting in the, in the living room having a beer and looking at each other with a stupid grin you know fuck's sake let's do it you know what, what's the point of not uh, doing this again we had some unfinished business uh, to do and that's about a a year about 14 months ago i guess maybe we go uh, some years back in time and uh, you make it brief what was it to like to split up mostly personal problems we 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 were finished with each other and i think at that time we we were the well was dry there there was no music left in the four of us and why because we grew apart as as individuals as as people we were we spent like 10 years together and I think some things went too too fast and I don't know we we finished and there was no other way than split up and I think it's good that we split up then and it took six years and everybody could do his own life everybody could do his own projects and I think everybody also found out that he missed Gorefest somewhere deep in his heart although I was not the one to admit it so I was always now it's never gonna happen again it's never gonna happen again definitely never gonna happen again and then I thought hey but what what if it's gonna happen you know talking about projects as you said what did you in between uh, you were still concentrating of music somehow I believe what kind of oh something completely different uh, more or less 80s new wave electro kind of stuff which was how you call it uh, I mean I needed to do something completely different than metal I lost all you know I lost the love of making music I think in the last year or so with Gorefest and this was something fresh this was something new at least for me and it, it, it brought me back joy in music again but you know blood is thick I uh, did mostly Aryan Star One projects. I did a couple CDs. I did a tour with uh, Star One. Uh, I played on a Lana Lane album, and I did a tour with that. I uh, did some session stuff, but mostly the Aryan projects. Uh. And is there time now to continue th that work, or will you now just focus on on Gorefest totally? At the moment, Gorefest is number one, and Aryan knows that. So I think he's uh, patiently waiting for me to uh, have some time to help him out again. I think maybe next year there will be a new. Um, Star One project. I think we're talking very carefully about that at the moment. So, but that's going to be a while. Everybody wants to know how does the new Gorefest output uh, will sound like. So, where do you uh, think? The, where is the link to which album you uh, put out in the past? Say, Falls and Erase. Looking at Eddie. And chapter, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's Gorefest, yeah, but it, it's definitely, I think, a heavier album than Soul Survivor and Chapter 13. But I mean, some of those elements, I just told somebody, it's like perhaps 40% uh, falls, 40% erase, and 20% of the other stuff. You know, the stuff that, that yeah, we we have in ourselves. You know, but it's, it's, it's heavy, it's got some fast songs on it, it's the, the, the typical Gorefest groove it has and yeah some some minor things to, to, to keep it interesting. Uh. Stupid question, um, what are the typical Gorefest ingredients you need to make a Gorefest song? Uh, that would be the four of us. It's, it's, it's weird because some of the songs, I mean Eddie wrote a couple of songs basically on his own, you know, doing the drums, uh, programming the drums, playing guitar, and he, he gave us demos, and those demos would sound like, I don't know, you know, like, like Slayer, for instance, I just, just picking a name. But when we play it with the four of us, 
it sounds like Gorefest. I don't know what it is, but it's it's something that we, we have, I guess. But what does it take? I think a memorable riff, a good riff that you can... Somebody called us, and this is a long time ago, about 15 years ago, people called us the ACDC of death metal in Holland. Why? Because uh, if you hear your riffs two times, you can sing along with them. You know, you can remember them. Well, I think that's a, a good ingredient, a riff that you remember. What I uh, found very interesting in the past were your uh, lyrical output also, especially on Ford, so you did uh, very clear uh, so sociological critical uh, standpoints. Is something that's something you could uh, capture for the new album, or what is your uh, lyrical concept like on the new album? I just did the same, although it is basically my vision of today's world. There are a lot of issues to talk about. Yes, yes, and there's quite a lot of issues uh, on the album. Yeah, me and Eddie. I mean, I write the lyrics, but we always do. You know, he's basically my producer with the vocals, so we fight. <laughs> he's like, I don't like that, I fucking like it, you <laughs> fuck off, I'll do it anyway. But I mean, we were uh, involved with the, yeah, with the whole uh, recording of the vocals. Uh, ah, it's not a bright future, uh, I do see a lot of death and destruction. Uh, in our backyard and in the very near future and I think we are going to pay the price for being ignorant and, and giving power to people that did not deserve that power. Maybe this state of the art Gorefest output is false. So maybe you can explain me why. Why is just false uh, equal Gorefest? It was just a very natural vibe. We, we had no expectations. There was no pressure whatsoever. We just recorded an album that we hoped that would sell like another 10,000 copies. It clicked and people liked it. People picked it up en masse, you know, and, and we sold a lot of copies from it. And then, you know, we, we toured the US with death for, for like two months. And, and it was a time when death metal was growing up and you, uh, you choose the right channels to yeah, interact with people. As, as well, but I mean, we were like very atypical because I mean on, on Mindless we were like a gore band you know with, with all the gore lyrics like Carcass Head and, 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 and say Cannibal Corpse but I came from a punk, a punk background and after like 10 gory lyrics I had no idea what to write about gore anymore so I came up with I think one of the songs from, on Mindless um, Mental Misery and I gave the lyric to Frank and I said you know you think I can get away with it? And he was like, ah, oh, why didn't you do that like a year earlier? I mean... So uh, we have to talk about some inconvenient stuff also. Uh, and maybe you can prove me wrong, but I... Um, I read an interview where you um, uh, said that you were playing death metal at that time because death metal were trend was trendy. In about 84, 85, I got into punk rock and like bands, the, the, the American hardcore bands more, like uh, Suicidal, uh, DRI, stuff like that. And, and then the, the, the German bands came up, Creator, you know, the, the, the European thrash uh, scene, you know, which was more extreme than, than, than hardcore. And then the first death metal demos came out and, and it was even more extreme. And we were like, you know, we want to make death metal. So that's, we, that's why we were a death metal band, we were death metal fans. When was the point, that is what I wanted to know, when you switched your style into these more rocky stuff that when, you... When Baudouin discovered Thin Lizzy and Led Zeppelin, and when Eddie and Baudouin should have made a solo album, <laughs> instead of... I mean, we talked about this a lot, you know, we can laugh about it now, but it was definitely not my album. and. Of course you defend it. And I think there's actually, this is co some songs on the album work. Because um, Demon Seed, Dragon Man are like some of my favorite Gorefest songs. But, but, but some songs are like so... N they should have had another singer. And, and, and probably another guitar player as well. You know, and, and, and the vocals and didn't write uh, fit on this no, musical style. In some, some did, but, but most of it was hell. With, with Erase, we tried very hard to make a modern metal album, and we had no fun making it, and it didn't really 
had no enthusiasm and after that we decided okay what are we gonna do we're gonna try and make the music that we're enthusiastic about at that moment it was more the 70s kind of vibe and like oh yeah cool let's make a song like that that sounds like Deep Purple and get the Hammonds in there and this and that and we were just so carried away by that because we liked it so much what we were doing and if I look back 10 years later at the album I'm like holy fuck what were you thinking you know it's a cool album and I, I bits about it I still like and and admire that we we had the balls to do that but yeah well, maybe we should have just uh, you know started a side project vent our 70s frustrations in that direction and use the metal but we didn't really have extreme metal feelings in us at that moment you got a new chance now so yeah use it use it, it up. <laughs> no we're not gonna fuck it up Okay, reaching the end, our show is called What's Metal? And we ask everyone every time, what is metal for you? Is it uh, music? Is it lifestyle? Is it both? Is it none of it? It's not a lifestyle for me, not anymore. It was when I was younger. But when you grow older, you discover there's more in life than living the metal uh, lifestyle, living the dream. I guess when I cut off my hair, some of the metal lifestyle went away with it. I've been a metalhead for, I don't know, since I was like 11 or 12, so you can say it's my life, I guess. Sad as that may be. <laughs> uh, I play metal when I get up in the morning, I play it when I get home, so... Uh, I don't play metal all the time, I have a lot of different tastes in music, but I'll always be a metalhead. I don't think that's... Uh, I'm too old to change that, so... Uh, yeah.